Hello, welcome to the Friday, July 9th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Ever needed to give your Python scripts more granular access to elevated privileges? Well, sudo, of course, is available on Unix systems, but by default, sudo does not usually enable its Python interface. So Xavier put together a brief diary describing, first of all, how to compile sudo with the Python interface enabled, and then how to use it in your Python scripts and take advantage of sudo's ability to allow elevated privileges for fairly specific tasks. And of course, like always with sudo, be careful how you configure it. It's often easy to assign privileges that really do more than you expect. And these last couple of days when I talked about Kaseya and some of the detection tools that were distributed, I always mentioned be careful where you download them from and make sure that they are authentic. Well, it uh, looks like the bad guys, as expected, are taking advantage of this event. And there are a couple of security companies, among them Malwarebytes, reporting that they are seeing some uh, emails that are distributing fake security security updates. They're pretty uh, rudimentary done in the sense that there are simple emails with attachments or in some cases links to websites offering a patch for Kaseya. And of course, what you're getting is not a patch. Instead, you're getting additional malware like, for example, Cobalt Strike. Not really sure if any uh, Kaseya users will actually fall for this. This looks a little bit uh, too obvious, these emails that I've seen, but uh, better to be aware and you never know what your users will click on. And Kaspersky is reporting that they are seeing a malware campaign that uh, they are calling uh, wild pressure uh, to spread out onto Mac OS. Typically, it's spreading on Windows. It's a compiled a Python a script, but later versions of this particular malware are now checking whether or not they're running on Mac OS and then will adapt themselves in order to support Mac OS. On Windows, it will add itself to a run once registry key. On Mac OS, it will just use a simple launch agent instead to obtain persistence. So far, this sample has been observed uh, being used against some industrial targets in the Middle East. So it's really more a targeted attack. Nothing that you have to worry about too much at this point. But well, as usual, be aware, Macs are not necessarily immune from malware. Patrick Wardle also has a brief blog post about this, uh, pointing out that his tool Block Block uh, will uh, alert and block attempts uh, to add themselves as a launch daemon. So uh, that's one tool that you can consider uh, to provide, protect yourself from malware like this. And security researcher Laxman Mutia found an interesting issue with Apple's password reset, their forgot uh, password uh, function for iCloud. Now, there's a little bit of dispute between uh, him and uh, Apple how severe the vulnerability is. But what it comes back down to in the end is how to prevent brute forcing for password resets. The way this works, and it depends a little bit on how you configure uh, your iCloud account, but essentially you may have a phone number configured for your iCloud account and Apple will send a six digit reset code to that phone. So the problem now becomes how can an attacker possibly brute force that six digit code without having access to the phone? What Laxman Mutaya came up with was that essentially by using multiple IP addresses, it's possible to bypass some of uh, the uh, protections that Apple has put in place. You get up to 36 uh, different attempts from each IP address, from each client IP address. There is a six attempt limit for the reset function, but it's applied separately for all the six server IP addresses that Apple uses for this service. 
So it's certainly possible then uh, with, uh, I believe about 27,000 uh, different IP address, which is not that difficult uh, to obtain to brute force this code. Of course, Apple also offers a stronger two factor authentication methods that can be used to authenticate your account and also can be used for password reset. And that's probably the real fix here. Relying on an SMS by itself is usually not recommended. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.